for Islamic banking, I went to Afghanistan, I went to Dubai, I went to Iran, particularly, and also Southeast Asia areas. Uh, so we, we did consultancy, we helped to the implementation, we look at their products, uh, we look at uh, their needs for Islamic banking. So this is where we learn in, in Islam, uh, when we talk about uh, Mu'amalat, we say now we have like four mazhab, mm, mm. Uh, Maliki, Shafi, mm. Hanbali. So everybody say, in some place, cases, they say, hey, uh, the way Malaysia practice is not practice in Dubai, mm. or the way mm. practice in Iran is not practice in Malaysia, mm. and so on. Why? Because of the understanding of the mazhab. Mm. So if the technology is good, the system is good, the system can handle uh, four mazhab. In one system, they can handle all the four mazhab. Mm. So what will happen? Uh, everyone in the world can open an account with you. So we, yeah. we can look at uh, country risk. We can look at uh, uh, segment risk. Segment risk, yeah. yeah. Country yeah. risk, segment risk, business risk. Business risk, the industrial risk. The industrial risk. And also the, the product risk to that particular. So AI is a learning process. It will continuously learn. It continuously learn and relearn and relearn. Right. It will stop learning if the human does not interfere, correct? It will stop learning if there is no, uh, what do you call it, no data. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at the data, there are more than 75 countries in the world mm. already have uh, Islamic banking places. Yeah. The places where we never imagined, you see, they also have at least uh, Islamic window, yeah. uh, Islamic, full Islamic bank, yeah. uh, it's there. Maybe uh, we, are, we can say that uh, the, the, what do you call it, the products are not so advanced, the products are very simple, but the basic product, uh, because the niche is there, the banks are there. That's, I mean, surprisingly, India, majority of uh, Hindu, uh, uh, Hindu uh, population, uh, population mm -hmm. a majority Hindu population have a, a first uh, Islamic bank called Taqwa Islamic Bank. Islamic bank. Yeah, that, that, I think in 2008 as well. It happens after 2008. It right? happened after 2008. Right. And I think in China, so they have uh, Islamic bank. Uh, yeah, in China, in China, they have Islamic bank, in Philippines, in Kyrgyzstan. So all these countries... Uh, yeah, they, these, these are the countries uh, where majority of the population is non-Muslim. Okay, we have here today, we're talking about uh, Islamic banking. Now, I have here with it the expert in Islamic banking, Hyrule. So just, Hyrule, before we start, quick introduction of who you are, what you do, your background, your experience. Hi. Hi, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, Roslat. So my name is Ayrul. Uh I've been in Islamic banking for many years. Right. Okay, since what? 1991. Okay, so there's most to about 30 years, yeah? Around 30 years. Yeah. Well, I just started. I just started in 1990. I just started in the banking industry in 1990. Yeah. So we yeah. are. Same at part, <laughs> maybe, maybe, but I look, I think, I think, yeah, you must be younger, you look younger. Yes. So, uh, you see, from there we learn about Islamic banking. So we went all over the places. We learn from the experts. We talk to many people and we also do consultant uh, with a lot of banks, Islamic banks. So from there, actually, uh, I learn what Islamic banking and I grow Islamic banking. I was told, uh, beside uh, your knowledge in Islamic banking, you also have technical knowledge where you help the banks implement the Islamic banking system. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you were in Afghanistan, uh, you were in certain countries to help them to implement the system. Yeah, yeah, uh, I did, I did. I went to, uh, for Islamic banking, I went to Afghanistan, I went to Dubai, I went to Iran, particularly, and also Southeast Asia areas. Uh, so we, we did consultancy, we have to the implementation, we look at their products, uh, we look at uh, their needs for Islamic banking. So this is where we learn. Okay, so so you are not only a theory person, but you're also a practical person where you're involved in, in, in the term. Because you start from consultation, uh, uh, advisory, uh, implementation, and making sure that the banks uh, implement and run the system uh, 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 successfully. Yeah. yeah, that's what we did. Good. So, so with your experience and what you see, I think in the conventional banking, we've seen a lot of funding coming out. We see a lot of uh, digital uh, uh, digital bank coming out, uh, digital technology coming out, uh, artificial intelligence technology coming out. Uh, what is it in, in Islamic banking? Is it differ or is it the same trend? Uh, 
Yeah, similar to the conventional banking. So in order for Islamic banking to grow, basically, they need to rely on those technology. Okay, they need to rely on, now people are talking about cloud banking, mm. uh, talking about uh, the digital banking, artificial intelligence. So those are the tools that uh, Islamic banking need to adapt. Why? Is it critical for them to have this? Definitely, because uh, you see, with cloud banking, basically, uh, the accessible they can access uh, will be a lot uh, a lot more places. Yeah, they they can also be assessed by worldwide and reduce their what do you call it uh, management maintenance of the database, that servers, all that. And then the AI will help them to reduce the risk, yeah? and then will also help them to to get their target customer who would be mm-hmm. the target customer. So they can they can uh, predict uh, the most. Uh, who will be the most successful, uh, what you call it, uh, client mm. that they can they can push for? Uh, so that's why it is very important for the Islamic banking as well to adapt uh, to similar technology uh, adapted by uh, adopted by what you call it. Uh, banking. I think I think not only uh, uh, you are right there. I think not only in terms of the bank technology, so it must be at par. Uh, the with digital uh, with cloud with uh, artificial. <laughs> But the demand from customers, I think demand from customers, whether it's conventional banking or Islamic banking, I think the demand is the same. There is no uh, demand for services, demand for, for accessibility to the bank, uh, uh, using tools, using uh, your laptop, using your handphone. The demand is there. The, the demand, yes, the demand is there. The demand, because you see, nowadays people are more, what do you call it, uh, technology-centric. Mm. Okay, uh, mm. people in in... When when I started in the banking industry, people don't use handphone. Mm. So last time I look at one, some one guy. Uh, actually, they use the time we have Nokia communicator. Mm. So mm. that was like wow, mm. the, the very advanced, very uh, you know, yeah, that's right. at that time. Mm. Now everyone is actually with smartphone. Right. So and mm. then people expectation will be different. In the past, uh, standing queuing in the bank for twenty minutes will be okay. But now people want everything to be urgently, you know, everybody need to be serviced fast. Mm. Uh, so they cannot wait. So their expectations are different. So if possible, they don't even want to go to the bank. Nowadays, people really have to go to the bank. Uh, they can do it, you know, using handphone or technologies, whatever can do. Now people don't even need to, what do you call it, withdraw the money, right? Mm. People can pay using QR and so on. So this technology, uh, Islamic banking, need to adapt. Yeah. So, in other words, demand, uh, the demand from customers, regardless whether uh, conventional banking or Islamic banking, the demands and the need from customers is the same. Because we, we are the one that using, we are using the system, yeah? yeah. Uh, uh, not not any specific uh, uh, region or specific countries. I think the demand for, for a technology in Islamic banking is or equal to the same value from the demand or, or expectation from the conventional banking. I think uh, 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 I think to to do this, I think the banks will also to consider about uh, uh, cost or expenditure, because I think uh, the the cost of expenditure. Uh yeah. When we talk about adopting these technologies, they they are not cheap. Okay. Uh, if we talk about AI, uh, mm. for instance, uh, you see now people use AI for risk management, especially on financing. So they need to calculate uh, the risk level of each customer. Yeah. You see, uh, some people they can just purchase the similar uh, what call it uh, AI services from foreign foreign uh, foreign companies. They already build the AI for US for UK. They try to implement it here. Mm. So that's not possible. Mm. You see, because why? Because the beha- people are different. The behavior are different. Mm. Okay, so. For them to implement the same uh, features of AI, they need to build engines. Correct. Okay. Okay. So I think that, it, that it, it must address the need of the community or the need of the uh, of the area. Yeah, that will cost the the, the the cost to do that is actually it's not cheap because you see, like just like if you can build something and share uh, uh, with more people, mm. the price of the the goods will be cheaper, right? Mm. Because you can share. Mm. But now it's very uh, customer centric, mm. country centric, mm. mm. so the price will be very expensive. Yeah. So, so if you cannot get uh, more people, 
your ROI cannot increase. That means that means with technology, with uh, 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 for the bank to embark on a uh, uh, the technology journey, the the uh, ROI or the uh, expenditure is huge. Yeah, but then again, uh, from here we will expect the the return will be high. Uh, customers to come on board because yeah. of the uh, ease of usage, because of the flexibility of the products, the attractiveness of the product, then the ROI should be there to 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 give you a better ROI. Makes yeah. sense, yeah. We we hope for that. We okay. hope for that. So we 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 seen you seen the you seen uh, the normal uh, so called uh, undigitalized Islamic banking, and now you are seeing uh, a digitalized Islamic banking. What was the opportunity there? Uh the opportunity, you see, uh, there are a lot of places where they cannot service. I mean, they, there is no branches. Mm. Okay, while the the banks are there, the branch is not there. Mm. Or in some places, uh, even the bank is not there. Mm. So the opportunity, let's say, if we are talking about digital Islamic banking, uh, this uh, and is the, the, the government allowed, you see, a bank in Malaysia can attract customers from overseas. Mm. Okay, and if the if the central bank allowed, it's again it depend on certain, uh, central bank policies. If they allow, for instance, open in US dollar, Japanese yen, mm. so we can attract people from Japan, from US, mm. from, from other places mm. where they don't have the facility mm. uh, to to. I mean, because Muslims are everywhere. Mm. I mean, we are not talking about Muslim. The opportunity is it because now people are talking about a lot more people knows yeah, even Muslim or non-Muslim knows the the benefit of having. Mm. Islamic banking. banking. Yeah, so they try to they try to embark, but they don't have that facility. Okay, we'll touch on, we'll touch on the on the uh, customer uh, customer behavior, customer preference later on during the podcast or uh, during the video. But now let's talk about the opportunity. You mentioned just now that the opportunity is uh, not limited. Yeah, uh, for example, if you have a bank in uh, uh, just in the central or uh, in the capital state or uh, capital city of the particular country, the outreach can be for the whole country and if the central bank of that particular country allow uh, any foreign accounts to be open then the limit is more than this right yes so that that is that is one thing about uh, uh, tapping the untapped untapped market and having giving access to islamic banking to uh, those who are currently uh, are limited for the bank to reach out yeah with this then the reach out will be uh, greater uh, then i think you, you mentioned about technology as well because if the, if the central bank allow this to be approved then uh, cross border, uh, cross border uh, accounts, cross border transaction can take place. Yeah, uh, Ch- 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 You see, when we talk about s- s- cross border, okay, uh, cross border, you see, the opportunity become bigger. It's not only about who will take. You see, now in mm-hmm. in Islam, uh, when we talk about uh, Muamalat, you see, now we have like four Mazhab, mm-hmm. Maliki, Shafi, mm-hmm. Hanbali. So everybody say in some place, places they say, hey, uh, the way Malaysia practice is not practice in Dubai, mm. or the way mm. practice in Iran is not practice in Malaysia, mm. and so on. Why? Because of the understanding of the matter. Mm. So if the technology is good, the system is good, the system can handle a uh, four madhab. In one system, they can handle all the four madhab. Mm. So what will happen? Uh, everyone in the world can open an account with you. Mm can take financing from you. Mm. You see, it's not like uh, Malaysia is for Malaysia. Yes, correct. I think, I think it's, it's very, uh, uh, very because the mazhab is very unique uh, to a particular country, the mazhab is unique, and uh, you address it correctly, if a particular system can handle all four mazhab, then it's actually uh, global. Yeah, it's yeah. global. Uh, um, I don't know whether, whether such a system exists or not, that can handle four mazhab, or is it still being developed right now? Uh... Huh. When we talk about system, of course, uh, different company will have different systems. Right. Different bank will have different systems. Understand? Uh, but for us, uh, I mean, InfoPro, uh, we we do have the system. Mm. Uh, because we have experience. You know, we like in from the beginning. Uh, we we already mentioned that uh, we implemented system in what uh, in Afghanistan. We implemented in Iran. We implemented in Dubai, and we also implemented. In Malaysia, mm. uh, our the four different ones up there. There, are, there are four different ones up there. Covered. and we put everything into one system. There you go, solution to my problem, Jai <laughs> Okay, 
say we have that he has that capability, he have that knowledge of that capability, and also he have the expertise in that capability. And I think he also can refer if let's say there's a need to have a system before Mazhab, you can refer to the right uh, person to the right company that does this yeah? Yeah. Okay, area. Okay. Now uh, also risk. We talk about risk reduction. Yeah. Um, can we reduce risk then? Because it's open to global. Uh, are we using any sort of tools to to reduce risk? Uh, yeah, risk. You see, uh, I mean, we use AI. Okay. Uh, risk. When we talk about risk, of course, uh, from central bank or BIS, they have a method. A method. What do call it? Uh, their market risk, their credit risk. Uh, all these have their own methodology. Mm. Okay, so this methodology basically uh, will be like again uh, country centric, mm. uh, business centric. Mm. Uh, you see, uh, different business they have different kind of risks. But uh, if we put AI, AI can learn, relearn, and relearn. Mm. So you have you need just to put your target. What is really your target? Okay, I'm targeting. Let's say we open to the whole world. I'm targeting American people. Okay, mm. so the system will learn the behavior of the American people. And calculate their own risk, mm. and then Malaysia, Hong Kong, China, everybody. So we can, we can look at uh, country risk. We can look at uh, uh, segment risk. Segment risk, risk yeah. The, country the, risk, segment risk, business risk, business risk, the industrial risk, the industrial risk, and also the the product risk to that particular. So AI is a learning process. We continuously learn. It continuously learn and relearn and relearn. Right. It will stop learning if the human does not interfere. Correct. It will stop learning if there is no uh, data. what do you it? No data. No data. Yeah. No data. And it, it will it will continue learning. And I think as human, we need to uh, use it wisely and and to implement it in yes. the organization to to make sure that the organization benefit from that. Yeah. Now you, you, we talk about about okay. We need growth. Uh, we need uh, 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 tools in, in Islamic banking. Uh, there is an opportunity <coughs> in Islamic banking. Now, what are the growth? What are the trend of growth in, in this, uh, 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 not only this region, but I think globally? Uh, okay, when we talk globally, uh, Islamic banking has been, the growth has been continuous. Mm. In the, Is it constantly going up? Constantly going up. Right. It's not going down, it's going up and right. up and up. In fact, the, the asset size of the Islamic banking has surpassed the conventional banking. Mm. Uh, in, in, Malaysia, some in some countries. Yeah. Uh, they, they have surpassed because mm. uh, people are going to it, uh, more people uh, understand about the benefit mm-hmm. of the Islamic banking. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. they, 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 what do you call it? They, they educated, they educate the, 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 the population, the people, and then they have their central bank. Uh, central bank is very important. Mm-hmm. So if the central bank works together with the banking side, then mm-hmm. a lot of things can make it ease. You see? Mm-hmm. Because because I think the consumer, uh, why I think one of the reason the uh, demand for Islamic banking increases is because uh, the consumer awareness of the of the product and also the benefits of what being offered in the Islamic banking, and also I think uh, uh, as a Muslim, uh, if there is a choice between Islamic banking and conventional banking, of course uh, I think the Muslim person or I will choose Islamic banking because I know that safe, that's halal, uh, uh, is toiba, and also there's no riba and gara for that matter. Yeah. That, that will protect me, inshallah, for for life after. Now, I, I think you mentioned slightly about the government or the central bank uh, uh, involvement uh, in in coming up with policies to help the growth of the Islamic banking. Maybe maybe uh, in your context, if you I just want to elaborate on that. Uh, yeah. You see, uh, let's say a bank uh, want to introduce a certain products. Uh, we take for instance. Uh, one financing product, mm. okay. One fin- simple financing product, uh, Muraba product. Mm. Okay, what is Muraba product? Muraba product is basically uh, a bank will purchase yeah. a goods, uh, a car, for instance. If you talk about uh, a car, Muraba half. Okay, so a bank will purchase a car from the dealer, yeah. and then they will sell to customer. Mm. Okay, if we look at this pro- proper uh, this transition. When the bank purchase from the dealer, the name by right will be the first person name is actually the bank yeah. name. Right. And then uh, when we sell to the dealer, so the uh, the we sell to customer, then the customer name will be the second name in the in the, in the run. You see, in the papers will be yeah. the, uh, second. But 
then a lot of people say, and then it will bring the value of the car down. down. So people don't want this. So in Malaysia, what the the, the central bank had done, uh, they don't require this. You know? yeah. So they allow the person name to be the first person name. So instead of buying the car, they said it's buying the rights of the car. Mm. So you don't have to transfer the name. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. this is what uh, how the central bank yeah. helps, you know, in in in, uh, in so there are a lot of other things require uh, central bank intervention mm. and to ease the process of the summit mm. thinking. That, that that's very important, especially for the consumer, because you you put it correctly. I don't want to buy a, a less than one day car as a new car. Yeah, yeah. If I go to the Bora Bora, I know then if central bank comes in. Uh, the name of the purchaser can be me, uh, or the name in not in the purchaser, but the name in the registration card is me. But the transaction take place that the bank will purchase, will buy the car from the dealer and will reset, will sell it to the customer. But with you or the Panagara policies, my name is being quoted in the registration card as the first owner. Yeah. Yes. So that, that that's important actually. That's and important. I think I think not only not only for for uh, buying an automobile, but also for buying a property. Yeah. I think the same transaction happens when when buying property. Yeah, same transaction happen for property uh, and other goods. Right. It so, depends on the product. Yes. Yeah, so product. in this particular case, if you're talking about property, there is no uh, additional uh, taxes to be paid. For example, stamp duty tax yeah. and also uh, uh, real property gain tax because then the bank is not in the in, in the business of buying and selling properties. But because of more about transaction, they're allowed to buy it and then register uh, the name in the title as a uh, customer. Customer right? names. So that we have to eliminate the, 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 the RPGT. Uh, if not, uh, then a normal transaction, I buy and sell to you, there's, there's real property gain tax, there's uh, stamping uh, that is done, you know, double stamping. One is I buy, I need No to additional cost will be yes. there. So it's the same. Same cost if you're going through conventional and same cost if you're going through Islamic. Mm-hmm. Right? On the only thing that in Islamic, you meet all the Sharia of Islam. Okay, and 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 also I think uh, 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 why is, you mentioned about growth. One is better policies. Now I think we did mention about demands. Uh, there is a demand for Islamic banking. You mentioned correctly, customer or consumer uh, knows uh, after the education process comes in. There is no difference between uh, conventional and Islamic, except that the Islamic meets uh, the Islamic banking. It meets the uh, Islamic uh, Sharia, and also uh, uh, we eliminate the four elements lah. The riba, the gira, the uncertainties, and all that. Right? Mm. There is no interest. There is a profit. Now, also, I think interestingly, uh, the population. Right? Mm. How does population impact the growth? Yeah, the 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 more people you have in the uh, the in the world, the more mm. people will take the loan. <laughs> so the more the, the more, more people you have, the more growth in the population of the world. Yeah, and the more growth in the uh, so called the uh, Islamic. Islamic. Yeah, uh, and especially, especially in the Islamic, in the Muslim, uh, in the Muslim community, community especially the more the more growth you will get. You see, uh, from the other perspective, we look at it. You see, after okay, what everybody remember in two thousand eight, we have what uh, subprime crisis mm. in US mm. uh, when they actually purchase what you call it uh, debt. Mm. Yeah, they purchase debt. Suddenly, debt. They actually sell debt, sell debt, sell debt, and mm. the first person mm. uh, cannot service the debt. Mm. Then the whole collapse, collapse. the whole banking collapse. Yes. You see, uh, this is actually uh, what you call it experience that uh, people face, mm. and they started to understand. Hey, is my debt is a, a safe debt or good debt or what? Mm. You see, so in Islamic banking. Uh, you cannot sell BAP, no? You must sell an asset. You must back. sell an asset. See, any debt, it has to be, it has to be an asset, asset, back. Uh, asset back bill debt. Correct. You see? So, so if you uh, if you cannot service the uh, the debt, basically you have the asset to sell. Mm. Uh, so mm. Like guarantee, mm. you see. Mm. We, we know this, but mm. uh, in the conventional banking, they are looking from different perspective. Mm. So the, and now, after the collapse of the uh, the banking industry, people start to learn. And now, a lot more people start coming into Islamic banking because mm. of this. Mm. Because they want to ensure that uh, their money are safe. Mm. Their savings are safe. Mm. You see, we, 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 we heard last time a lot of what call it, uh, pension fund, all mm. collect because of this as well. Mm. Okay, So, now people are coming into Islamic banking to ensure 
their money are safe. So that's why uh, the growth is there and mm. more and people are actually mm. coming to Asian banking. So not only the increase in population, but then the increase in knowledge, the increase in knowledge of Islamic banking helps to grow the Islamic banking further here. Yeah? Yeah. And I think uh, one clear example you mentioned is a subprime that happened in the US, I think in 2008 or something like that, where papers, uh, loan papers are being traded. Mm. And not, not the asset, but the loan papers are being traded. And I think it's escalated, the, the value of the loan escalated, I think, uh, threefolds or fourfolds. Uh, of the original value and then when when uh, when you come to reselling you cannot get that same value and that's why it collapsed because the demand suddenly demand for or, uh, I think subprime demand for subprime loans dropped tremendously and I think that's that's what happens in the US yeah okay good I think I think uh, 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 you also mentioned about uh, uh, 2008 now since you mentioned about 2008 we also have the financial crisis during that time <coughs> really, we have I think uh, up to date we have three or four financial crises 2008 financial crisis. What, ha- what happened in the, in the financial crisis? How does it impact the banks, the, the Islamic banks? Uh, we, we had a lot of uh, crisis, okay, but uh, so far, looks like Islamic bank uh, very stable. Looks like they are not affected at all. Yes, so, so you... So, okay. <laughs> so that's why, you see, starting from 2008, there are a lot of uh, countries, you know, started to implement Islamic bank. Mm. More and more uh, banking. Mm. Uh, now, uh, if you look at the data, there are more than 75 countries in the world mm. already have uh, Islamic banking places. Yeah. The places where we never imagined, you see, they also have at least uh, Islamic window, yeah. uh, Islamic, full Islamic bank yeah. uh, is there. Maybe uh, we, are, we can say that uh, the, the, what call it, the products are not so advanced. The products are very simple. But the basic product, uh, because the needs is there, the banks are there. I think, I think, I think uh, when you mentioned about products, I think product with uh, Islamic banking and conventional banking is at par. Uh, I think my experience in the bank, uh, I remember 2008, 2007, when the uh, so-called in the conventional bank, the, the interest rate for housing loans skyrocketed. But under Islamic, we have a cap. We, we, we have a cap and that is declared up front to the consumer. Uh, if let's say uh, the economic uh, at that time uh, the condition was there is a cap of how much uh, profit rate we can we can, we can charge, charge the customer yeah. yeah so that in in the in the in the extent lock the the exposure of that yeah, customer, exposure, yeah? Of the customer. exposure I remember uh, a few of my colleagues came in uh, when they doing the housing financing some of them are not looking at variable rate but looking at fixed fixed rate fixed, rate, fixed profit rate because they are worried that 2008 will happen again. And of course, it, 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 it does happen. I think uh, we had another crisis after that. But at 2008, they're looking at six straight because they wanted to protect themselves. And I think the Islamic banks provide that. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think that helps. Uh, not that, that helps the merge of or, or the, the converge of the non-Islamic banking uh, believers into Islamic banking believers because they are protected. And also, I think there's also uh, in, in let's say for housing financing, there's also a, a methodology on, on default. Uh, the default rate or the default interest on Islamic banking and conventional banking differs. So, uh, 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 interest on interest, the, the Islamic banking does uh, will not allow interest on interest to happen. Whereas in the in the conventional banking, it could happen. Yeah. So I think that's one of the the element. And I think uh, 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 the growth or, or the presence we're talking about. I think some of the banks, uh, Takwa Bank, Takwa Islamic Bank in, in in India. That's I mean surprisingly India. Majority uh, Hindu, uh, an Hindu uh, population. Uh, population, a majority mm-hmm. Hindu population have a, a first uh, Islamic bank called Takwa Islamic Bank. Islamic Bank, yeah, that, that I think in two thousand eight as well. It happens after two thousand eight. Right? Happened after two thousand eight. Right, and I think in China so they have uh, Islamic Bank. Ah, uh, yeah, in China, in China they have Islamic Bank in Philippines, in Kyrgyzstan. So all these countries. Uh, yeah, they, these, they, these are uh, the countries uh, where majority of the population is non Muslim. Yeah, we have uh, Hindu. We have the uh, China Taoism Buddhist. The Buddhist. Uh, Taoism. We have the Kazakhstan, where it's more on uh, Russian. Uh, uh, what is the yeah, Russian? actually, Kazakhstan is mainly Muslim. Mainly Muslim. Mainly Muslim. But you see, they they come from the uh, communist bank of correct. But then now, little by gradually, you know, I think they're little, exposed. They are exposed. They are exposed. They start to learn. Yes. So they are pushing. Yeah, they are still starting to push. Uh, I remember, uh, if not mistaken. Uh, one of the Islamic uh, uh, scholars, uh, Mufti Taki Osmani, mm. went to that area, mm. uh, Kazakhstan, uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan, to basic, if not mistaken, including Kyrgyzstan, 
to to explore to teach them uh, because the need is there mm. so they call uh, this yeah. mufti from pakistan to 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 share to share the knowledge on sabi banking mm, 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 mm. i think i think uh, uh, after that then the 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 knowledge when they have the knowledge then the demand it created yeah, the demand so they created the demand the mm. demand yes well, i think kyrgyzstan all the stan countries are actually under the russian influence but i think Once Russia gave them the independence, I think the demand start to come in. Mm-hmm. And I think surprising that the Philippines, where mo- mostly is a uh, Christian population, yeah, yeah, the demand for Islam, Islam banking is coming in. Uh, right. the mm, yeah, for Philippines, you see in the Manak Mindanao area, there yeah, yeah, the, there's there's Muslim community, yeah, Muslim communities, right? They speak many languages, including mm. Malaysian language. I see, yeah, sure, sure. So, so they, they some of them actually came here to learn, mm. and they come back, so they want to also establish some bank. Mm. So the the needs is there uh, again, but the the problem is that I mean if we go talk back, um, I mean we talk about opportunity or something. Uh, well, they still have Islamic banking, but you see a lot of people have difficulties to go reach. there to reach them, yeah. to reach out because yeah. the technology is not there. Yes, so that's that's the more reason that Islamic banking needs to be digitalized, digitalized, need to have accessibility, webs, apps, uh. AI, you know, mm-hmm. so you help the bank even though it's it's not your regular brick and mortar bank. Yeah, it's just a single uh, uh one branch bank, but the outreach can be limitless. Right, right. So so you can have a bank in 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 assuming uh right north of the country, but your outreach can reach up to the south, to the south, or even the mountains area yes, where yes. it's you know, very difficult. To... Yeah. So that that, oh, that the bank. Yeah. So you need technology to help you. Uh, yes, is we see the progression of the Islamic banking going into technological, and we know that I think it's growing. Uh, the the banks are growing because of the demands and supply. Yeah, demands are there, supply there, and at the same time you are in compliance with the sh- with the Sharia. Yeah, All right. So I think from from customer perspective, uh, um, what what is what will be the challenge? I think we uh, we touch about the needs for technology. We touch about the growth. We we have mentioned that the growth of the bank is there. Uh, under Islamic banking, and we quoted a few, uh, a few uh, 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 historical and a few points there, and also we we talk about uh, uh, the demand, and I think we did touch something about uh, just now buy and sell cars, and also buy and sell properties. But uh, from customer perspective, what would be a good choice? Uh, yeah, why why people now when we talk about customers, of course, uh, a lot of people uh, Islamic banking, a lot of people were saying about hey, the Islamic banking will be the Muslims. Uh, You see, there are still a lot of Muslims. Uh, they do not have the access of Islamic banking. Mm. Uh, I went to Canada a uh, few years back. Mm. I met them, and they say, "Oh, we don't have Islamic banking here, so mm. uh, we don't bank here. Mm. So all the money they put in, you know, whenever they were outside Canada. So why? Because they don't have the the, mm. the, the facilities. You see, uh, so the need is there." Uh, people are becoming more conscious about mm. Islam. So when become more conscious about Islam, they conscious more about religion. Mm. They start asking themselves, "Hey, how am I going to answer? Uh, how am I going to answer the God later on? Mm. You know, after mm. I die." Mm. So that's why they start coming, coming to that. So if I if I were to say that uh, we just exclude the religion part, yeah, religion, but mm. of course uh, that is a, a requirement for me to make sure that uh, all is in Sharia. Yeah. yeah. But exclude the religion part. So if we take the non-Muslim or the Muslim for that matter, if we were to compare a product of uh, uh, Islamic banking and a conventional banking, you are saying now the Islamic banking products are more or less the same or better? Uh, Islamic banking products should be better. Should be better. Should be better because it's more stable, more reliable, okay. less risk all right. compared to conventional so, products. So, yeah, there you go. So, because we have all the uncertainty addressed in the yeah. Islamic banking product, we have the asset back based asset on the Islamic, yeah. product, Islamic banking product and uh, uncertainty that we address your your interest or your profit rate and also your default rate or, yeah, mm-hmm. or all yeah. your charges or fine for that matter. It's all declared up front, mm-hmm. right? So uh, then, uh, and the Islamic uh, banking product does not uh, discriminates against Muslim or non-Muslim. So if you are non-Muslim, if you want to to talk to your banks, uh, talk to your banks. If you want to find out more about Islamic banking product, you don't have to convert to use Islamic banking product. <laughs> so you can go talk to your bank and do a one-to-one comparison. And and let's let's take the religion portion out of it first, just as a normal customer. And I think if you were to do that, you find out that the Islamic banking product offers more. Yeah. Uh, 
you see the one problem uh, actually one challenges uh, in the Islamic banking uh, now is actually the marketing person mm. in the bank mm. they don't know what they are selling mm. I, I remember you mm. know I, I I I had my housing housing uh, housing home financing finance. home financing and also car oh. financing mm. both on Islamic banking mm. actually from the same bank but mm. different places mm. You know, when I went to the uh, to them, I say, okay, I want to take this financing. Mm. Uh, they were there. Mm. Okay, they asked me to sign, 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 sign. I also don't know what they have. I just sign, you know. Mm. But we, we we want to ask more. They cannot answer. So your your so if, if if they actually, I mean, if they can, if the bank uh, can basically train them to right. be more proficient, basically they can get more customers. Yeah, correct. I think, I think at that point of you signing is your total reliance on faith. Yeah, you just yeah. believe in it and you just sign on it. Yeah? Right. But I agree with you because uh, 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 when we were in the back and when we wanted to sell uh, Islamic products, there are customers who are seeing as details. And because of we are not uh, trained or we do not have exposure, we are not able to explain. The ability of the sales per- per- salesperson unable to explain to the customer will lead to losses in customers. Which will result the customer saying your Islamic product is no good, or your Islamic product is not competitive. Because my ability as a sales person to explain to my customer, to you, that what are the Islamic no, products? No, uh, the for the call it the. And at the time, at the time, remember we have a, a bank, we have a, a bank ABC Bank, we have a conventional bank, and we have ABC Bank Islamic Bank, where where the sales person is the same <laughs> okay, from it's probably from ABC conventional bank and going out to the market trying to sell Islamic bank. ABC conventional bank and Islamic bank of course if I'm the sales person I would say which one is uh, more comfortable right and at that time is conventional bank so I think the the, the lesson <coughs> here is that the, the bank so not only in terms of we, we talk about technology we talk about regulatory we talk about growth we talk about demand and supply but the banks need to play a role as well yeah that means they are they are, they are sales people they need to be, train them. They yeah. need to be trained and need to have that knowledge in Islamic banking. Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, challenges. We talked about all this. Oh, all this sounds so good. But what are the challenges? Uh, the challenges, okay. Uh, for the existing banks, uh, basically, uh, some banks, you know, they have bank conventional and Islamic. Mm. Probably the challenge is not there. Mm. Not that much, mm. but if you want to open a new uh, Islamic bank, to set up a new Islamic, uh, new bank, Islamic bank, you want to set up, uh, is very challenging mm-hmm. because why uh, you do not know whether you're going to get the ROI or not. Mm. You must have uh, first. You need to spend first, so use expenses, mm. and then you try to gain a new customer, mm. and people do not know you, mm. and mm. the risk is very high on your side. Mm. You see. Uh, we have seen a lot of company after they open then they close mm. so what will happen to my money mm. Mm. although the central bank guarantees yeah, certain is. amount yes. but certain amount mm. if I have more what will happen to that uh, money but in, 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 in any other business uh, 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 the pin level is that if let's say I'm not into banking and I'm into, into I want to open up a, a, a particular uh, public supermarket or particular cafe this sort of things the ROI is uncertain yeah so, so I think we need to approach. If you, let's say you're saying that uh, this is not specifically to open up uh, Islamic banking, but I think it's specifically to 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 open up any new business, yeah, any it's new a, ventures. It's a challenge, yeah. uh, but it's not impossible. Yeah. Really. Uh, but because if you can, uh, you can handle uh, all the what you call it hindrance, you know. Yeah. So basically, uh, you will be able to get your customer yes yeah you maybe can get it better than i mean if you can do the better ways you can get more customer than uh, correct to existing bank correct correct so these are challenges that you need to face and then uh, either you are brave enough or not mm. i think i think that's 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 the thing that the uh, the business or the the industries or, or those who are starting up a new business sure give it a real thought uh, whether or not it's worth the pain or not yeah but i think but uh, uh, the factors that you mentioned, the growth, the demand and supply, uh, it's all coming up. It's showing a positive uh, 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 trend. Well, then I think if if I were a businessman in the high capital, I think that I'd probably venture into that. Yeah. So with that, we wish all our viewers selamat hari raya, happy in Mubarak and continue your fasting. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.